Hello, Chibets. The winter has come and kind of faded out and then stuck its head around the corner and go, beep boo, how you doing? And uh, you were probably wondering what to do with all that time while you were stuck in home, uh, waiting for the, the, the nicer times to come so you can go out in the garden and like do some pruning and or just turn the soil. But you couldn't because everything was just frozen solid and it didn't even snow. So you couldn't even go out with your family and play in the snow. Bummer. <sighs> That's when you want to get a game like ice school. No, you don't want to go to school. You want to ice cool. Ice cool. Which is a high school of ice for penguins. Yes. In this game, you are playing as penguins. And one of you will be playing a catcher. While the other ones would be running away from the catcher trying to collect fish. It's a dexterity game. Not in the kind of tower of ice building things. It's a flicking game where you're flicking. And so your skill at flicking will determine how good you are at this game. Or how lucky you are at this game. In this video, I'm going to go through the rules. And I'm going to explain how to set the game up. How to play the game. And then I'll go into a review of the game. And then I'll tell you whether it's my cup of tea or not before leaving it up to you to decide whether this is something that you should be slipping into sliding into it's really hard to come up with a joke and that's no joke <laughs> yeah yeah Let, let's cut First thing you're going to need to do is take out all the components from the box because the box is in fact the board. You will need to lay out the board so all the coloured dots match like so. To secure the game into place you take four white fish and clip the board together like so in the four places marked, lining up the doors as you do so. There's a deck of cards, which are fish cards, which have points on them from one to three. You will shuffle these and then place them next to the board. Each player will choose one of the colors to be. They will recuperate a penguin of their color, which is like a weeble that wobbles and doesn't fall down. Three fish of their color, they have a card to remind them what color they are and an ID card as well. And if you can't see the yellow on the yellow table, it's actually white, it's not yellow at all. With everything set up and ready to play, it's advised that the players get used to their weeble wobbling penguin and do a bit of practicing by flicking around the board, trying to curve it or trying to make it jump or other fancy flicking tricks and probably cut their nails beforehand as well. And now we're ready to play. What will happen is players will choose the start player to be a catcher. Now this person has to catch all the other penguins. And what will happen is once a round has been completed, say the red player is the catcher first, it then passes to the next player who is then the catcher and then the next player and then the next player. Once all four players in a four player game have been the catcher, the game ends and you total up the scores. Obviously, if it's a three player game, again, each player will be the catcher once. But in a two player game, you will be the catcher twice and that will signal the end of the game. The catcher will start by placing their penguin anywhere in the kitchen inside the red box. Then the runner on the left of the catcher will start by placing their penguin in the classroom in the red circle. That player then has one flick to move their penguin anywhere on the board. And the object of the game is for the runners to run through a door. And if they get through the door, they take the fish off that door to say that they've received that fish. They then pick up the top card 
from the score deck and they keep that secret in front of them and then play pass it to the next player and the next player will do the same thing place their penguin on the dot and then hopefully flick and then the next player and eventually it will go back to the catcher and now the catcher will have their turn the catcher's job is to touch the other penguins. Now they don't have to touch the penguins themselves. If a runner touches the catcher, they've been caught, so to speak. But they're not out of the game. So let's see what happens if I do that. Yes, I actually caught the green penguin. So what I will do is I will collect their ID card. They have been caught. A runner that is caught by the catcher can carry on playing, collecting their fish. If at the beginning of your turn, your penguin is too close to the wall so you can't flick it, you have the right to move it within the red box just to, next to the place where you were. If your penguin is stuck in a doorway, it hasn't passed so it cannot collect the fish. It needs to go directly through. But as you can see, this one is stuck on the doorway here. What you do is you look top down and you see which side of the doorway is on and then you can move that penguin Again, inside the red box on that side of the board before flicking. If your penguin is flicked out or knocked out from the board, there is no penalty. You just place it back where it started. At any point in the game, if you have two number one cards, you show these to the other players on your turn and you leave them face up and you say, I'm gonna have an extra go. These will still count at the end of the game, but you can't use them again and they stay face up until the end of the game. At the end of the round, when either all the runners have been caught or one of the runners has collected all three of their fish, you will do an additional score. For each identity card you have in front of you, you will get to draw one extra score point. So if you're the catcher, you'll have your own identity plus any identities of any other players that you've caught, so you will get a number of cards so in this case I have two players plus my own I get to take three score points if you're a runner and you've still got your ID pass like the green player here he will get one additional score point card then you give the identity cards back to the other players to start the next round the player on the left of the previous catcher becomes the new catcher you set up the board again and you replay again until every player has been the catcher once. Then the game will end. Now the difference between a two player game is each player will be the catcher twice. And also each runner has to be caught twice in a round to end the game. So they will lose their identity card the first time they're touched and then the second time they're touched they are out. The game is finished. You will count up all the scores from all the cards that you've got and the player with the most points is the fishiest. So high school is a board game that everybody that hasn't been to high school will like or not. <laughs> this game is just primarily a dexterity game. You've got your token and you're flicking it around. So you either know if you like dexterity games or not. Um, the appeal to this game is that it does appeal to both young and old. For the young children, they will, you know, kind of grip hold of the theme, which is one person's it and they got to catch the other players. Yay! Which is a cool idea. For the adults, there is a whole level of strategy because these are not tokens. These are wobbly weebles. And there is a certain amount of skill that you can apply to these to make them do what you want them to do. Unlike a disc where you just flick it and it goes in a straight line and maybe ricochets. But the, the skill involved, or even the luck involved in this game, makes this a fun dexterity game. Playing Ice Cool is like American nine ball pool, whereas Crokinole is like Old English snooker. It's elegant, it's a bit more thinky and you know, slow playing. Whereas this is just fast and frantic and, and you'll find yourself just flicking that penguin as hard as you can, hoping it'll do the thing that you want it to do and maybe something special. Much like what I do in American nine ball pool. 
Yeah, but I know what you're saying. There's luck involved as well as skill. There's the luck of, you know, you accidentally do the thing that you want to do or you hit the thing you want to do or go through the door like you want to do. And then there's the luck of you actually get stuck in the door because the board has warped a little bit. Yes, okay, the board will probably warp a little bit or it might not be connected properly and it will be disjointed and so you're, 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 every time you can't get through the door because it, it's stuck on the lip of the other board, that's a thing that's going to happen, unfortunately. But at the same time, all the rules compensate for that. It says that you can do these things. You can move your, your penguin before you start. Again, luck of the draw can be a bit annoying when you're drawing the, the points, the cards. Yeah, but I think they've compensated quite nicely by having the ones as like certain special powered cards. You put two of these ones together, you get to have a second turn, which is useful. Yeah, the rule book is very well written and very well laid out. Everything is simple to understand. Everything comes with lovely little colorful diagrams. It's written in an order. It has humor, which is better than the humor that I have in this video altogether, which I'm feeling rather depressed and sad about now. But it explains techniques, it explains problems. Everything is explained in here. There's no circumstance that you could get in to um, unless the, the actual board or the table mounts, that, that's not explained in there. What do you do when the board mounts or when the table mounts or, or, or when penguins start eating, the real penguins start eating the fish. But that, that's not in here. But everything else is in here and there's no situation that you run into that you can't get yourself out because of this. And it's, it's easy to find a very good manual. I will have the, the 32 claret with some tuna. Yes, tuna. Mm. That is white. That is yellow. White, yellow. So yeah, it is a simplistic little flicking game where you're either very good at it or you're very bad at it or you're very lucky at it. But that's what fits this really well it it plays really well with kids kids will enjoy playing this game and it's meant to be a quick playing and it is quick playing and it doesn't outlive its welcome but afterwards you just move on to something else it's not a game that's meant to last forever there's enough choices in the things that you got to do although you cannot move the board around the board is always the same setup but every time you play you know do you go left do you go right do you try and jump over that wall do you try and flicking curve around that other player just to get away from them there are choices and as i said there are some skill involved in all those things that you can do so there is enough playability but not enough replayability in this game but it is what it is a fun 20 30 minute flicking game and when you know it it's snowing so let's talk about the components as we look at the snow falling from the sky the components are pretty good. Uh, the weebles are interesting because they, they wobble but they don't fall down. And the card art is okay and the card art on the board is okay. Um, the fish components are really good. They do hold the board together really, really well. Um, and that's really nice. As I said, you know, the, the board will kind of warp a bit with time and I think in a couple of years, this game will be like a like like a normal kind of pool table in your house you've had for like donkeys it's going to have little bumps and little ridges where you're going to know where it's going to roll and everything um the components are good and i like the idea that it all fits in one box and it is it's massive it's bigger than the box there's the box it's bigger than that but um yeah a simplistic card Nice art, it works, it works, and it has that thing. So what do I think about it? So, is ice cool my cup of tea? Or iced tea? 
Mm, it's okay. I, I kind of like it. I admire it for what it is. Um, it's one of those, it's, wow, it's the only probably dexterity game that we have due to the fact that, you know, they're either very expensive, expensive crokinole tables or they're, they're, they're dexterity games which don't seem to fit anything. And this, this kind of fits. The theme and the mechanics and the idea that one person, everyone takes turn to being a catcher. So everybody doesn't have the same objective, which again, I like, it makes it fun. Um, this game's best with four players, I think. Three players is not too bad. Two players, I wouldn't bother. Um, it's a shame it doesn't go up to more players. More players would be fun as well. You know, five or six players. Maybe an expansion. But um, yeah, it is fun. Um, it's not a game that I'm going to play all the time due to the fact that it is just primarily dexterity, skill, or luck, depending on how, how you are. Luck, luck, loser. Um, it's quick playing. It's something that I can get out with my daughter and the wife, or when we have like a few friends around and we just put it on the table before dinner or something, we just quickly have a flick around and have a giggle. Again, something for non-gamers, because it is a non-gamer game. It's dexterity. Yeah, so I do recommend Ice Cool if you don't have any dexterity games or if you have young children and you don't have any dexterity games. This is definitely a dexterity game to get. Um, if you've never had one, never played one, because it is fun, like, like playing table football. You'll play it a little while and then you just pack it away. And then it'll come out again eventually. Maybe when it snows again, you get it out and you go, ah, I know what, I'll play this. So there you go, there's my video, there's my review. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informatical, not the word, uh, formatical, not the word either. But I hope that you found it informative and it's pointed you in the right direction whether this is a game for your collection or not. Because you don't have to buy every single board game that's out there, you just need to own a few good ones and hopefully this has helped point you in the direction of whether this is or not a game for you. Thank you very much for watching. Please go and check out my site, boardgameseverybodyshould.com. Again, if you wanna help and you've enjoyed this video, like it go to my patreon site throw a few pennies my way maybe pick up yourself a little kind of special promo or something um and help support the show so i'll say ciao for now and remember please 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 everybody play nice with each other it's only a game <laughs>